Okay, let's get into microautophagy. Microautophagy is a system that starts kicking in, in the, about four hours after sleep starts or four hours after your dry fast starts because glucose levels have gone down. Specific proteins aren't suppressed, so they're being created to be able to merge lysosomes with cargo delivered to them. Microautophagy uh, is also reliant on microsomes. The cool thing about microautophagy is it actually does some things that macro can't do. For instance, it can get up to the nuclear wall and start taking broken damaged parts of the nucleus and throwing them in the lysosomes for degradation so it can repair itself. Your peroxisomes, your peroxisomes are important because they take lipids and materials and dissolve them down and release them into the cytoplasm for fuel for the mitochondria, for instance, and, uh, and mitochondria. Mitochondria have to be able to divide and go into mitochondrial biogenesis to make more mitochondria. But when they get burned out, they have to be removed. And this is where these types of uh, autophagy kick in. Microautophagy gets rid of burnout old uh, mitochondria, damaged parts of the nucleus, and the peroxisomes, which are necessary for your body to process lipids into usable free fatty acids and glycerols in the cells and so forth. So there's, there's the difference. Uh, Macroautophagy is a autophagy that starts with, a, with an autophagosome that surrounds cargo, bringing brought to a lysosome. Microautophagy brings the stuff right to the lysosome. And there are these interesting little proteins, little snare proteins that inter interlace between the two uh, vacuoles. You've got your, your cargo and you've got your lysosome and they end up lacing up so that the uh, cell walls can merge and it can engulf the cargo that's being degraded. So macroautophagy, microautophagy, like again, it's around eight hours before you start getting into microautophagy because it takes a long time for the glucose content of the cell goes down far enough. It takes a long time for these little carrier messenger proteins and signaling proteins to be constructed by the nucleus to be able to activate this type of autophagy. Uh, the last one to get kicked on is around 10 hours later, which is chaperone-mediated autophagy, which is why people like to skip breakfast because when you break fast, you break your fast. And when you do that, you kind of derail the whole ability to have chaperone-mediated autophagy. That's why sleep is so ineffective, because if, without chaperone-mediated autophagy, you can't get rid of the big, big, big problems inside your cells, the big broken and folded proteins that don't work and so forth that need to be taken out, and they just build up. If they build up enough, a cell can go senescent, which is why I take the physitin. So if there are senescent cells, you just get rid of this stuff. Um, so that's the trick. Tomorrow I'll be talking about the chaperone-mediated process, which is the ubiquinone proteasome system, of which is interesting because it, 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 it's like a wood chipper. You have to grind these things up in this other structure first before they can go into lysosomes. But that's for tomorrow. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for today, and I will talk to you soon. Yes? We have a message. Can you remind people to subscribe, please, sir? What now? Please. Oh, very well.